If you if you need a, a macro lens um, for the EF mount, it's either this one or the the non L one. And the main difference is IS. So if you need IS, buy this one. I guess if you don't, um, you might want to save a little bit of money. Yeah, with you know, one. this is the first lens that I ever had acquired that had image stabilization in it, which I think um, was actually very helpful for this particular lens. But a lot of lenses you don't actually need it. But if you are shooting at a macro distance, like you're trying to get really close up to something. It does help to have the image stabilization, especially at a shallower depth of field. Yeah, I mean, uh, with macro lenses, you want to definitely boost up your shutter speed and you want to uh, possibly boost up your ISO as you shoot just to get that higher shutter speed. And so, um, you know, saving yourself a couple of stops and getting better, uh, you know, low light performance basically uh, through the IS um, is, is pretty handy if you need it. Yeah, and I actually found that I've owned uh, both Canon Macro 100s, the L and non L version, and I found that with the L version, I could actually shoot it wide open at 2.8 and still get pretty reasonable shots handheld which was a lot more difficult with the uh, non-IS version. I found a lot of the times I'd have to either turn up my ISO, like Nick's saying, or I would just have to go with a different aperture. I'd have to go f4 or f5.6 because it would just be really hard to get a nice, crisp shot. Yeah, my recommendation is that if you're shooting on a tripod, like you're shooting like flowers or something uh, with the, with your macro lens, then uh, go ahead and buy like the older version, save yourself a couple hundred dollars. But if you're a wedding photographer who has to shoot in like non-ideal lighting conditions and you can't use a tripod all the time, then this one is is probably worth it. And also, if you use the hundred for other things than macros, like if you're a wedding photographer and you use it obviously for ring shots and detail shots, maybe the shoes and stuff like that, you can also use it a lot for portraits. And I found there would be sometimes that. I would just pull it out for portraits because I could get closer or I just like the way uh, some of the renderings were. Yeah, I mean, um, if you want to get a couple of creative uh, shots like in between uh, doing your portrait uh, sessions and stuff, everybody's stationary. I mean, the, the autofocus on this lens, even for things like portraits, really isn't that, that good at all. Um, and, it does uh, have like a, on the side it has like a, a button where you can adjust like how far it's focusing. So like you can go from infinity to whatever, to whatever, to whatever. So it doesn't have to focus the mm. full length, which can help in the autofocus because it does have a long distance of focus. Yeah, but if you need to pull it out in a pinch and do a couple of uh, portraits and stuff, I, I think you have a couple of great pictures doing that too. So I mean, yeah. it's, it's totally doable. Yeah, and I think that um, another great feature is obviously it has image stabilization, but it also has weather sealing, which comes in handy from time to time. And I feel like a lot of people that use macro lenses do like uh, insect photography or some sort of nature stuff where there might be out early mornings where there's fog and there's dew and there's weather. So having the weather sealing is advantage. Yeah, yeah. If you're uh, trying to get that rare sp uh, spider picture, then you might want to um, invest in this lens for the weather ceiling because you never know it could be raining. Right. Yeah, <laughs> you never know. So let's jump on the iPad. All right. So here is a photo I did on the job, believe it or not. This is a wedding photo. Um, this shot, I shot pretty close up. Um, obviously, with the macro lens, you could get closer, but I kind of purposely placed this uh, bouquet of flowers on the edge of this pretty mansion I was shooting at with uh, where the light was coming back in through so I could just get tons of bokeh. I just wanted to get lots and lots and lots of bokeh. And this is a shot wide open, but you can see it's at, because it's at 2.8 as opposed to some of the faster glass that Canon has, the bokeh balls are pretty round and you can actually see some of the jagged edges around it, which is not perfect for that sort of thing. But most of the time when I use this, it's, it's a, for a closer distance. I just wanted to show some of the other ways you could use it. Um, and in this case, I used it on a portrait session. This is actually my wife. Um, this is a photo we did uh, for her bridal portrait a year after we got married. This was like a gift I did for her. And um, for this one, I shot, like you can see, I have bokeh in the foreground and in the background. And the foreground bokeh is actually a little bit creamier than the background bokeh. And I think that's one of the cool things about this, uh, this lens. It's not super duper sharp, like when you're looking at at the subject here. She's not as sharp as could be, but it gives it really kind of a cool vintage flair and a nice port kind of portfolio looking image that you may use from time to time on a portrait shoot. This kind of, uh, th this is like a, a newer L lens, right? Like I'm kind of yeah, looking at this photo. Yeah, I think it came out in 2009. Oh, okay. Yeah, it kind of has a, later yeah, it has a newer rendering than like the 35 Mark I or the sure. 135. Sure. 
But yeah, um, when I use this lens, I used it uh, mostly for for macro shots. I was like, oh man, I got to carry this big thing around and do a macro shot for the um, ring shot. Yeah, you got to get the bling. Exactly. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, for for this, like, if you're in a non-ideal lighting scenario, like I was here, and it's handheld, like the IS probably came in very very handy for this this picture. You know, I upgraded from the uh, from the non-L version, and the non-L version was pretty good, um, you know, especially if you're just using it for, for ring shots um, when those are requested. But, yeah, I mean, I think uh, the reason you, you just buy and spend a little bit more money is just the, the IS, and it does have a really modern-looking uh, rendering. I guess I, I never really shot any portraits with it, but I was kind of looking at that portrait that you shot, and I was like, oh, this looks like a like a newer yeah, L. Yeah, it's definitely yeah. a newer lens, and it's, you know... Um it's great. I mean, if you if you're looking for a specialty lens and you do a lot of macro photography, I mean, you probably and you have a Canon system, you're probably going to have this. Yeah, if you're shooting EF mount, I would say the the five DSR plus this lens, um, it's it's really sharp throughout the frame. Would probably be a really really awesome setup, and it, yeah, you would have really IS cool. too. So. A bunch of photographers shoot that exact same setup for headshots, and they just love it. So I, I would imagine mm. that would be. Would yeah, be and, and I've also heard of uh, photographers using this for headshots too. Yeah, it's a good it. headshot lens because you can get there's no minimum focus distance really, so you can always get close enough but yeah um macro lenses um if you need one i would buy buy this one if you have a little bit extra cash and you don't want to um and you want the is so yeah check it out it's a great lens